is the evangelized part where you manifest, where you bring this culture to life every day. And uh, yes. this, this, we do this with the entire uh, across teams, depending on how big the organization is, we fill up a whole auditorium or, or, or a boardroom with this. And we have a whole day fun exercise where people talk about ways to bring this culture to life. Uh, and it could be small things like, uh, if one of your values is we support each other like family, then we'll have this massive cork board in our boardroom and put thank you notes there every week. And, you know, just things like that where we, we have a culture day or a value day. We, we LinkedIn does this really, really well. So I, I give them ideas from how this works in different companies. And, and they actually look at it plan out a 12 to 18 month calendar where they bring their culture to life. They bring their values to life They in, in everything that they do. So it's, it's, I think by the time they get to this first or second step, there's always skepticism in the first one, but by the time we get into DNA, then they realize the value and then they give more time to this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've dealt with all levels of resistance um, uh, uh, in, in my various, various projects. Um, and uh, again, companies might have gone through this um, operation. They might have gone through this vision, mission, writing stuff at some yeah. point, goal settings, but they, they don't see the value of doing this from a, from a whole different perspective. So a lot of it is about changing that mindset and, and, and starting with empowering questions and bringing people on board. And once that happens, um, it's, it's the momentum is there. That as Absolutely. they go through and you kind of do an inventory, there must be a, a simultaneous sorting. And like, this one's neutral. It's neither like amazing nor, you know, uh, horrible. Yeah. Put it to one side. This is great. We need to keep it. And that's toxic and it's killing us. Yeah. So w there's the fun exercise again. So, so, let, let's talk, let's be specific regarding the customer side of things. And I think the the metrics are there. So companies say we have a 3.2 Google rating right now <laughs> on right. reviews and we would like to be a four. So, okay, that's good. And you can see the comments. You can, you can see what people are saying about your company, right? And we talk to partners, we talk to uh, uh, the partners and, and whoever else that they're engaging with to get a sense of how, you know, people feel from a customer perspective. So that's very easy to, to address. And some things that are working, those are positives. We look to amplify those and the other things they might not feel are a problem issue but we we, we prioritize you have to prioritize some things um, that will move the needle so what will create the maximum impact going forward but again we connect back to purpose right kevin because the whole thing needs to address so why are we doing this what is the key purpose and what is the greater good that we want to achieve in the world um, and so as you know, once you see that connect flow through, it's easier for you to filter and sift through things that right. say, okay, this is more aligned with our purpose. This may be not so much. So we actually go with the, go through an exercise where we, um, we, I create a purpose visionary exercise for the customer department, for instance. And we say, if our purpose were true, three years from now, if we delivered on our purpose, what would customer experience look like? Right. And so, and then you reverse engineer that, right? And say, okay, to achieve this, what do we need to do now, right? Because that's aligned with our purpose and this is what customer, customer delight looks like. Now let's reverse engineer and say, what is it that we need to achieve to be able to get that outcome? I see. So then it could easily be the case that they pick out something that's happening in the organization today. And it's yeah. actually great. It's delightful. But unfortunately, it has to go on the cutting room floor because it, it no longer serves the the greater purpose. Yes. Greater yeah. Purpose. yeah. And, right. and, and once we do that, and then people get absolute clarity around the purpose and how it permeates through all operations, mm -hmm. all aspects of the business. Um, this is a process that I uh, that I sort of came up with and um, it's a wonderful exercise it's called purpose visionary where we we look at all the departments and we say here's if our purpose were fulfilled and i look at it three years down the line and say this is this is what we would look like from a comms department this is what our marketing would look like this is what our products would look like this is what our customer experience would look like and so when you have that vision now it's about pulling it into reality. So people see the end result, uh, even from a people perspective, your L and D teams, like, I mean, what, what, what do you want your people to become at the end of, yeah. at, at end of this period? We see ourselves as being, you know, tech, tech, tech savvy. We have grown, we have achieved this. So you write it like a reverse, like a press release almost. 
yeah. you write it like a press release. And, and so once you have those vision, mini vision statements across your various departments, then it's easy to move towards in that direction because people see the outcomes. Uh, the yeah. problem we have today is people don't realize what, what are these, what, what, does, what does success, what does, what does purpose fulfillment feel like and look like? So having that vision, creating that, those mini visions for each department is powerful. Thank you.